Hello and welcome to this week's Live Local and Loud with me, Kevin Gorn. On this week's show, I shall be chatting to the Funkalicious legend himself, Mr. Frank Benbini, who's from Uncle Frank, Fun Loving Criminals and UB40 featuring Ali Campbell. And he's got some great stories to tell. And we'll also be playing lots of homegrown music by local bands. Hello, I hope you're all well and are having a great year so far. Let's kick this week's little show off with the very latest from The Phased and Suffocate. Thousand stories 
That was the phased and suffocate. Of course, they can next be seen um, this Saturday in Wolverhampton at the Robin, supporting Gene Genie, which is a David Bowie tribute bound. So that sounds like fun. So that's Saturday, the 13th of January 2024 at the Robin in Wolverhampton, supporting Gene Genie. So great stuff from them. Right now, it's time for Paul J. Roberts and Cinquecento. Cinquecento, but you leave me with no memento. And you say I'm a fool, cause I'm getting too deep with you. I'm in love and I never suppressed it. But that's to the point you could get me arrested. And you say I'm a fool, cause I'm honest through and through. Time and the place is 500 years from now I digress and you wish I was focused I annoy you like a plague of locusts but at this moment in time I can never be clear of you I tried to raise a tab because we'd never crossed it And it was around about here that we lost it And from this moment in time I'll be living in fear of you Now you say I got a broken heart Stop me, that's the one that is falling apart The day that I crash is 500 years from now That was Paul Roberts and Cinquecento. He's next playing Friday the 26th of January 2024 uh, at the wonderful Firebug in sunny Leicester. And he's going to be supporting Tom Hingley, who, of course, is former in Spiral Carpets frontman from 89 to 2011. So that'll be a pretty good gig. I bet that'll be a busy one. So that's on Friday 26th of January 2024 at the wonderful Firebug in sunny Leicester. Um, Paul J. Roberts supporting Tom Hinckley. Yeah, great stuff. Okay, so now it's time for this week's little interview where I'm chatting to uh, the Funkalicious legend himself, Frank Benbini from Uncle Frank. He's also from Fun Loving Criminals and wait for it, UB40 featuring Ali Campbell as well. But first of all, we'll start off with one of his songs from his band Uncle Frank and Exercise Them Rights.
That was Exercise Them Rights by the Funkalicious Uncle Frank. And this week's interview is with the great man himself, Frank Benbini from the band. Hello there, Frank. How the devil are you today? Not bad, my friend. How are you? Thank Excellent. you for having me on the show, dude. <laughs> That's quite all right. And thank you so much for coming on my show. That's great. I know you're a busy man here, there and everywhere. Just briefly, let's start at the beginning. Now, can you just remind us which bands are you in at the moment and what parts do you play in them? Oh, well, obviously, um, for the, uh, over two decades now, it's been Uncle Frank, where where me and my music partner, Naeem, have been doing that since oh, 23, four years now, probably. Um, singer, songwriter, lead singer in that band. And then alongside that, also Fun Loving Criminals, which I've done for over 21 years now. So uh, songwriter and drummer and vocalist in Fun Loving Criminals. And then over the last few years, I've been fortunate enough to join Mr. Ali Campbell from UB40. And um, so I've been doing a lot of stuff with with him as well. So yeah, they're the kind of three things. I've, I, I've guested in a, in a couple of uh, uh, drumming roles um, with uh, a fabulous artist called Deborah Bonham, the sister mm -hmm. of late John Bonham from Led Zeppelin. Um, did a couple of tours with her playing drums. I've also done some stuff with Cantaloupe, great hip hop band um, wow. over the years as well, guesting, doing, uh, being a rapper um, in that band as well. So, yeah, quite a, quite a few endeavors that I've been mixed up with. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. So, it sounds like you sort of started up Uncle Frank at the beginning when you got into uh, Fun Loving Criminals. Is that correct? Around the same sort of time ish? Yeah, it was, ar it was around then. I think I, I think with um, with Uncle Frank, it, it it was kind of something that was spawned out of the city of Leicester, my hometown. And it was just around the time as well, I was playing in a couple of different Leicester bands, Mole, Baby Genius. And it was all around that kind of melting pot time of the late 90s, early 2000s. And, and and then obviously 2001 or two, I uh, befriended and w was hanging out a lot with Fun of the Criminals. I was making records over in New York. Oh, wow. Quad Studios, yeah, in Times Square, which was unique. That was an amazing experience yeah. going over there. Um, I remember being in the studio in the first week of us starting preparation of uh, of making a record and you know i was in the i was in the green room and one minute paul mccartney walked in and the next minute coldplay were in there and, uh yeah it was a radio edge was in there one day and fun loving criminals were in there and i was there for my that's band amazing. at the time a leicester bank called baby genius and that's kind of where i ran into um on a professional and in a recording studio basis with with, with fun loving hence how that kind of went like that do you know what oh, i mean when it yeah. was the time to be to so, be asked to join that band so most of the bands that I speak to would have your leg off to be in your position that you are today, Frank. <laughs> so, have you got any tips or hints how, how they could maybe, you know, just start to get get in there, perhaps you know, just get um, on the first rung? Well, I, a lot of people ask me this. So over the years, I've done some talks in music colleges for kids and and, uh, and the youth that are trying to get into recording music and being in bands. And I, I know I, I often lead with the best bit of advice is, to be, is make sure you're a people's person. What I mean by that is make sure that you can hold a conversation and, and be and be as warm as you can and be as open and um if you can put a little spoonful of uh, of comedy in there, because you definitely got to be able to to laugh, because you get dealt with some serious blows in the music industry. So, and then the second thing I, I normally uh, I normally say is be be careful what you wish for as well, because it's not a uh, it's not all sunshine and rainbows uh, no. being in the music game. There's a reason why they call it the business because oh, it's okay. uh, it can be very unfair at times. Um, so I think you've just got to try and always be yourself. Yeah. And don't don't let people manipulate you and mold you into something you don't want to be if you've got a, if you've got an idea of what you want to be and what kind of music you want to make and what kind of person you want to be try and stick to that rather yeah. than have people lead you a certain way that doesn't feel comfortable that's it. there's my biggest tips for anybody new or wanting to get in the game or be a recording artist or a touring artist like myself 
it's um it, it, it's it's hard work kevin it's not as easy yeah no people no. think you know i was having this conversation with someone just the other day and it's like uh, to, to be fair though to the general public they don't really need to know what it's like i suppose all they do is pay the money and want to come to come and see a show and be entertained mm. and that's where it should stop really but for those that want to be in that business I try and give people as much advice as possible. And that is, you know, be careful what you wish for because it's uh, it's like anything in life. It's ups and downs, roller coaster, yeah. And it's not for the faint-hearted neither. And you've got to put yourself out there, keep getting out there, doing, you know, going to any opportunities you can do. Because like you're saying, if you're in that recording studio over in LA and meeting all sorts of people, um, which no yeah. doubt helped open other doors for you. So. It did. I mean, to be fair, the, the, the first thing was like, it, it, even before it even got got to that stage it was standing outside music venues i used mm. to stand outside of um rock city over in nottingham handing out flyers of the, the the shows that were coming up later in that month and you know being out in the in the cold and the rain and most people not interested in taking that flyer and just doing that and trying to meet promoters and meet people that were putting shows on and you know finally meet the people that run the venue and just slowly slowly trying to get your leg up every time and yeah like yeah. I say, and, and if you can be that kind of people's person, be open, bubbly, talkative, mm. um, that really, really helps more yeah. so than being like a shit up musician. I, I suppose it helps more to to be able to communicate with people and uh, and be somebody that wants that wants you around their company yeah. more so than being the fastest guitar player or the mm. or the crazed drummer. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because okay. when you're talking about being on the road and being in studios and being in tour buses and living out of each other's suitcases you'd rather pick somebody that you can get along with more so than whoever the flashiest musician is right you know these are things that i've learned that i try and pass oh, on okay. to people yeah. up and coming you know what I mean? And like I said earlier, a sense of humour is important. Having as soon as you said that, I've got this image. I can't get it out of my mind. It's, <laughs> I wish I could. I think I think I'll be getting therapy tomorrow for it. But I'll never forget <laughs> that image you have when you're, I think, probably mostly naked, and you've got red flower petals on you for one of your singles. <laughs> that was a few years ago, wasn't it? But that, that was, was hilarious. The, that was on the front of a magazine, and it was a uh, it, it, it was uh, a photographer, great photographer. I can't remember her name. Her name escapes me. But she was, she were, she went on to be a photographer for a lot of the um, uh, magazines, like TV magazines. They, they oh. do them elaborate photo shoots of the, the cast, the Coronation Street or EastEnders oh. or soap pop uh, stars. She does a lot of their photos now. I think yeah. her name was Amy. Thing. But um, but she said, oh, I've got this idea, but I don't know if you're going to want to do it. And I was like, well, she says, I was going to get like 5,000 red petals, ask you to strip naked and then cover That's it. That's her like idea. <laughs> yeah, it was her, wasn't mine. You think I want to do that? Because I, I remember, sh I remember shooting that in a cold mm. October in a warehouse, and the floor, the floor was a concrete floor, and it was oh, freezing. Word. And I had to lay there naked, and then you know, my yeah. music partner discreetly laid the petals over all my private parts <laughs> <laughs> but also i mean your your more recent uh what is it your diablo single that's that's got a quite quite a nice uh photograph of your which made that's you great. laugh as well a bit like the queen uh, one was it is it queen exactly Sheer Art Attack? absolutely completely um note for note that front cover is is a tribute to one of the greatest bands and someone that influenced us and influenced a lot of the sounding yeah. Um, songs on the new one called Frank album. So I was like, you know, lads, I want you to uh, kind of like semi strip off and Vaseline yourself up. They just looked at me like, Frank, what are you doing to us? You know I mean, <laughs> I said, trust me, the photo is going to look fantastic. And then the photo, the record company was like, that's what we want for the that front is, cover. That wasn't going to be that wasn't going to be the front cover, Kevin, of the album. But mm. the record label, we sent in the photos from the photo shoot, which was about 30 of the photos that we were thinking about. And they just come back and went, this is genius. You, you, <laughs> you need to you need to use this one. So that's what we went with. Yeah, totally agree. Absolutely classic, that is. Absolutely classic. <laughs> right, Frank. So, okay, so now you're in, obviously you're in some pretty big bands at the moment. Now you're drummer in two of them and front man in one, is that correct? I'm the drummer, fun of the drummer, yeah. I'm the lead vocalist in Uncle Frank, yeah. and I am vocalist slash percussion player ah. in UB40 with Ali Campbell. Which one of those yeah. roles do you prefer then? I love them all. I suppose I, suppose I get 
the best of both worlds. Because even when I'm playing drums with Fun Loving Criminals, m the, uh, you know, 50% of that drumming role is also being a second vocalist. Mm. Um, so I get to flex on both things in that band. But, you know, with, with, with Uncle Frank, some of them songs are, are quite big rock ballady type songs and a lot of harmonies. That we don't really do with Fun Loving Criminals. Fun Loving yeah. Criminals is more spoken word, rap, funk, yeah. blur, rock and roll, where with, with, with Uncle Frank, it's very, very much song-based, singer-song-based, yeah. and then uh, and then it's more multicoloured because we have the, the full band and we've, we've lately been leaning towards more of a rock a rock side. So with that, I've, I've really needed to step my game up as far as lead yeah. singing. So yeah. I enjoy them both. And then with that, uh, and then we're working with Alex. That's just to share i mean each night I, I i think to myself when i when i'm walking out on stage you know he plays to like tens and tens of thousands of people at his shows it's the biggest reggae band in the world you know sold yeah. same amount of records as bob marley i mean it's crazy he's, he's known internationally yeah. you know so uh, w when i go out it's like count my blessings that i'm uh, that, that i'm supporting one of the best voices in reggae music yeah you know absolutely. when i'm hitting them songs like red red wine and kingston town and um i can't help falling in love with you and, and, and all these amazing number ones that he's had it's like just a privilege to be you know a supporting mm. cast next yeah. to his voice and then the percussion but what he loves me to do is a a ali with most of his career he, he doesn't really talk to the crowd all he does is sing the songs and he steps away he's quite a shy guy oh, right. um so he likes me to do the introductions and he likes me to kind of be a hype oh, man okay. but it, it, in that kind of reggae sense right um so i get you, you know between them between the three bands i i, I really do mm. have a lot of fun with all the roles that i play and you can see as well i mean in fun fun loving criminals you're always you're always wearing your white suit as well so it's you, you, you can't not notice you sat at the back there. No, but, well, the, be the beauty about that band is it's a, it's like the trifecta. It's a triangle on stage. So you've got, there's only three people. So the drum set at every show is set very close to the front of the stage. Right. Because there's only three of us. So it's not like, you know, like seven pieces or bands with brass sections and this and that fill the whole stage but what we like to do is bring it in mm. so we're in the middle of the audience so to speak so we're very we're quite up front you know what i mean like yeah. i say with, with fun loving there's kind of like two vocalists i suppose you've got the the main stuff coming from fast my music partner but then alongside that a lot of, because of a lot of it's hip-hop there's certain lines that i sing choruses that i sing so we, we kind of go in between the two of us so it's nice to be up front so the audience get to share that because mm. like with all the but you know with all the bands it, it, we all we all seem to be the three collective people which some bands fail with mm. this is, a, is another is another um little gem for anybody that's that's trying to bust it or or, or, or break into the seat and that is that you you we're really the the least important person at a show the main the, the, the main people at the show is the audience and mm. i think a lot of bands sometimes forget that you know we, we play f for them and uh, and they in return give us something back that makes us want to play even that bit more and so the most important person at any fun loving uncle frank ub40 show is the audience um certain bands could learn from that instead of making it all about themselves it 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 should be about the people that are, have supported you for years who pay their hard-earned money to come and see you do you know what i mean you, you yeah. want to give them a show you don't just want to turn up with an attitude and do a half assed performance it doesn't mm. matter if there's five people in the audience or fifty thousand people in the audience you gotta you gotta bring it every time for those yeah. people turned up that's right because you want to make sure that they want to come back again and see you well, absolutely and, and, bring and also their friends. go away go away as well kevin and tell people oh man yeah. I, I saw this band and they were great and they and they, they they interacted with us and made us feel part of the show yeah and it's not easy to do that and you, you you know you need to probably get a bit of experience until mm. you can master holding an audience in your hand and bringing them in yeah. um but when you do it makes for a a, a, a great experience, you know. The, ma the, the, the master that, that, that I have always looked up to and have always wished I could have 1% of his magic was Prince. And this is oh. somebody that I would see over oh. 56 times live. 
you know. Crikey. I was going to talk um, about I'll talk we'll talk about him in the next section Frank. Um oh, but cool. now come on let's play one of your fun loving criminal songs. Let's play Double Double. Now can you tell us a bit about what this is about how did the ins- who wrote this and and how what was the inspiration behind it? The inspiration is with, with a lot of fun loving criminal works it's fast we'll, we'll we'll come up with some melody sample the kind of beats it it'll, it'll give me a rough idea and then I I, I do the lyrics I wrote this song Double Double and it's about our trip like this time last year we were over in America on tour and you know I, I was always conscious that a lot of fun of and criminal songs were always written about New York and we were on tour and we went to the west side of America so we were we were traveling from San Francisco one day and we drove down route one which is the route that goes all along kind of the cliff edge and the ocean and it takes you all the way down into LA and it was kind of like we saw it as a road trip we had a day off and that was our day to do this road trip so all the band are in it in this big suv and off we go and we're we're putting some of our favorite albums on the sun's coming down the seas there you can see dolphins jumping up it was really uh, idyllic it was great setting and i remember us listening to the doors who we love we love the doors and listening to old hip-hop and we're on our way to play our show in la and we've not played la for a while so when you listen now to this song double double you'll hear that road trip in it you'll hear me reference that we're listening to the doors on the stereo and we're on our way down to play a rock and roll show in la and the actual chorus the the word double double is actually the nickname of a burger that you can go in to a famous burger chain that's all over california called in and out burger and it's one of my favorite burgers in the world and the best the best burger to order is called the double double with cheese so when you hear me singing double double in the chorus now you'll know what right. ta- what, what, what we're talking about but that whole song was it's like one of our first times we've ever s- written a song about another part of america and, it, it, and it's california that's what the song's about it's uh it's a fantastic funk slash disco slash fun loving criminal sounding song excellent well let's play it here's double double by fun loving criminals it's the sound and look of the 60s. Surfers cruising Southern California beaches, trying to find waves even better than yesterday's. Surf it wasn't born here, but it did spend many of its formative years here. It was so much fun, we didn't understand why nobody else thought it was. When you think back, what kind of memories does that bring back? A lot of good times. Do 
That was Double Double by Fun Loving Criminals. And this week's interview is with the great Frank Benbini from the band. Um, so Frank, now one of my memories of, of you and your band, Uncle Frank, uh, was at Simon Says Festival in 2017 here in sunny Leicester, when you did an amazing tribute to the Purple One. Is the artist formerly known as Prince a great influence to you? Because you said you said oh. you've seen him fifty-seven times. Yeah, incredible! Just the greatest that ever lived, and there won't be another one like him. Um, and you know, I was talking earlier about how to bring a, uh, how to bring people into your show. He was the master at it. He would have them in the palm of his hand. He could make an audience do whatever. I've been in his private parties, been in an after-show party. I've been to concerts. I've seen him perform at festivals, open air, in the round set up. Um, wow. and it's just there's there's no live scenario that he couldn't take over and turn in you, you know it, it, it'd take you somewhere mm. it'd just take you somewhere like and then you'd leave that show and you'd come out and your jaw would be on the floor yeah. and a lot of the time I'd be like what's the point of doing this because I'm never going to be that good ever like it, 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 it's, as, as much as I love him and appreciate him and just dote on him and it He'd make me angry sometimes because he'd be like, "How do you, how, how do you do that? How do you get that good?" Like it, it just, it, yeah. it just frazzled my brain. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, and I suppose really, it took me a long time to be like, "Well, you know, I just, I got to, I, I got to do me." You know, mm. Prince is doing Prince, and 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 if if that inspires me, that should be enough, Frank. So don't yeah. quit <laughs> no, <laughs> because I go and see him some nights, and I'd just be like, "Oh my." god that's it like you say, you've, got to be, you've got to be true to yourself so you've got to you've got to be you um yeah however that doesn't stop you aspiring to perform yeah. like somebody else or try yeah, and I'm never, gonna, impact. Never, never gonna get there none of us ever no. are the biggest no. the, 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 the biggest the biggest stars in the world or you, you know uh, uh, not even a thread on his coattail it's just he was just something else is is song is songwriting his musicality you know, mastered 21 instruments by the age of 17. You couldn't even name 21 instruments. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, he's yeah. it's, it's like, it, it, you know, his vocal range, his dancing, his yeah. style, the sex appeal, everything was just phenomenal. 
I remember at that uh, at that gig actually, you had a little. Was it a white guitar? You had a, a guitar that looked like one of his as well, with a like the swirly thing going on, yes, Paisley right. type guitar. You still yeah, got that? The, yeah, it's called the Cloud. It's from a Prince's. It's part of Prince's, you know, special guitars that a company um, started making and, and oh, selling. Right. So I have it. It hangs in my office um, oh. above my desk. So yeah, that's uh, along with some, uh, you know, amazing um, Prince memorabilia yeah. that I've spent a lot of money on over the years and been lucky enough to know some of his musicians that have gifted me with one or two things which is incredible yeah do you still do your tribute to prince N not not for a long time but I'd, no. uh, it'd be great to do it again now what i'd love to do is go to paisley park and perform it with the band mm. and when every year they do these they do a two-week kind of long party in remembrance of prince and they have all different people playing and i'd love to to go over to minneapolis minnesota and 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 do do the purple rain because that's what we used to do we used to do the purple rain album but in a reggae style and mm. it's amazing how it works i mean mm. the other thing that's fabulous about it kevin that i i did a run of um interviews with with some of the mainstream press uh j just last year was obviously we i had my friend sinead o'connor perform on that album and wow. it was the only time she's ever She's the, it's the second time she's only ever sang a, a, another Prince song because she vowed not to do one after Nothing Compares to You. But okay. I sweet talked to her and asked her if she'd like to do wow. um, a song on, on the album, and she did, and it's absolutely beautiful. So, so how yeah. can other people get hold of it? Is it still available in your store? Yeah, yeah. If you go on, if you go, uh, if it's on Spotify, it's on all the streaming sites, and mm. you actually you can actually get each track on YouTube as well. Mm. Um, and there's a couple of videos that you can see of us as well performing that, uh, yeah. which is so much fun. It's so much fun, and it's yeah. for me as a Prince fan to to play that song. I mean, we played that. We, we We've done that show in front of the biggest audiences around the world. We toured it in America, played the O2 Dome in London. Um, yeah, we did some huge yeah. shows with, uh, with with Radio Riddler with the Purple Reggae soundtrack. So, yeah, no, yeah. A, a, another amazing... Sometimes I forget, unless I do an interview like this, you, you've just brought yeah, it up. And so I can I'm going to even think about Radio That's... Riddler. And right, it's like, right. it was a massive part. <laughs> right, see, yeah, you're, you're saying about you've been playing to massive audiences, um, and you've also played, you still play to the old tiny audience, don't you? Like you did at the yeah. Sound House, was it a couple of months ago? Yeah. Which, which, which do you prefer most, big ones or little ones? If you pardon the expression, little ones are more stressful. Oh, than big, big ones don't phase me at all. Whether it's Glastonbury, whether it's Poland Rock Festival, whether it's you know, any of the huge ones that I've played over the years, Isla White Fest, being filmed live on TV, Rock in Rio, 80,000 people the other year, live on TV. They don't bother me at all. They're like, they're, they're like fun. Right. They're like easy, easy yeah. for me, that them ones. But play to 20 people in a, 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 a singer-songwriter evening somewhere, right. and it's like, oh, God, here we go. Do you know right. what I mean? It's like... And you wouldn't think that that's the way it, it would be, but that's the way it is. Because oh, um, you can see them eye to eye, I suppose. You think, right, this is, you know, these are people. Yeah. Here, right? you never know I remember, in New York. <laughs> yeah, I saw you at Duffy's Bar, didn't I? Uh, that was also last year in Uncle Frank. At, um, yeah, that was, Luke... so that, that was a strange one, that was. I, 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 I got... Um, Frank, I Frank, I'd, I'd, love to, I'd love to chat, but we need, we need to crack on. I've only yeah, got a sorry. couple of minutes left. So, right, okay. So tell us about now. Uh, Uncle Frank, you got a new album coming out or is it, has it just been released? Yeah, it just got released just the end of 2023. Just got a brand new single. Came out on Friday, which is a, a multi-core remix by oh. an artist called Multicore that's a faceless. We've not even met this guy that did the remix. He's kind of like one of these faceless people, like a slipknot kind of person. Right. No one knows what he looks like. Um, he just asked for the stems, remixed it, and um, goes by the name of Multicore. So that single came out uh, on Friday. And it's a remix of the song Off in the Distance, which is off um, the new album Diablo, oh. um, which isn't. Uh, one of our favourite songs on the on there. It's a uh, it's a wicked wicked piece of music. Very proud of that. Very proud of that whole album. Really. Yeah. There's some absolutely stonkers on Diablo, and it's it's gone down so well. So chuffed. 
you know, Joe Wiley been playing at Craig Charles, Radio 2, 6 Music, Radio X. Got and now Hermitage FM. Hermitage yeah, FM now, in a minute. <laughs> yeah, now my boy Kevin rocking it. Um, <laughs> it. BBC, big shout, Dean Jackson, everybody that's, you know, Radio X, even yeah. classic rock, gave it 9 out of 10. So, um, Frank, Frank, so can, you t- can you tell me, what's the influence behind the song? What's it about, Off in the Distance? Off in the distance, I suppose it's um it's a song really about hope. I suppose um yeah, it's uh it, it was with, with the stuff that's been going on in the world and how how terrible the world seems to be most of the mm. time. There is hope and there is actually some a lot of good uh, good good news though as we all know doesn't really get spoke about does it it's always no. the bad um so i suppose this um, I, I suppose uncle frank could just stick in the flag up and waving it to say that somewhere off in the distance there's something good happening in the world i suppose really that's what the song's about excellent so we're gonna hit we're gonna hear that in a moment but before we do um how do people uh follow you uh, website www.unclefrankband.com you can go on we're on twitter we're on instagram we're on facebook uh facebook it's uncle frank band um there's two uncle franks on there because our original one got um taken over um and, and we kind of got through off it it's a sad story oh, so okay. make sure when you go on facebook it's uncle frank band you'll see our black circle with our name uncle frank written in white that's how you can tell the difference oh. uh, but yeah go on then we're either uncle frank band or uncle frank music on twitter but yeah um thank you for your support always always see you at local leicester always repping the leicester music scene and we'd be screwed without people like you so big up yourself my friend thank you very much frank and thank you very very much for today's little interview it's really interesting i feel like we ought to have a part two sometime yeah (laughs) part three and a part four that's that's it but why not just call it the uncle frank show Uh, there you go (laughs) brilliant i used to have one of them on bbc you did didn't you yes that's another thing we could chat about um okay well thank you very much for today's little show um for for today's little interview frank it's been great chatting to you um so now now here's off in the distance by his very own band uncle frank
And that was me chatting to the wonderful Uncle uh, Frank Bambini from Uncle Frank, Fun Loving Criminals and UB40 featuring Ali Campbell. Uh, yeah, so, so much to talk about there. We didn't even start to begin to talk about the tours that he's on at the moment. He's currently in the middle of a worldwide tour with Fun Loving Criminals. Uh, at the end of January 2024, he's going, going to be going back to Australia to play with them and carry on with that worldwide tour. So that's with the Fun Loving Criminals. Yeah, so great to catch up with him. So now it's time for a bit of Adam Rob. Robinson and Frozen Flower. You break the glass and you make a fist A broken beauty with a hammer's kiss Run your hand down and watch them glisten Take a moment to sit and listen You stare back from a broken mirror It's too hard to watch you wither We've all done something wrong But I know you can go on not alone, I hold you up It's not easy when life comes unstuck I know you brittle, I see the cracks Let me help you get back on track I know you struggle, you stutter and choke It can't be helped cause you think you're broke You keep your head up, I can't but admire Keep on going, climb up that spa Frozen flower and a porcelain wing A beard and broken and a precious thing What am I to do with you? What am I to do with you? Frozen flower and a porcelain wing A beard and broken and a precious thing What am I to do with you? What am I to do with you? It's too easy to go astray Come now, wipe your tears away Don't worry, you've still got time Take a moment to change your mind You don't need to be brave You're not alone, you can still be saved It's all inside you it's not a thing for me to do Frozen flower and a porcelain wing A beard and broken and a precious thing What am I to do with you? What am I to do with you? Frozen flower and a porcelain wing A beard and broken and a precious thing It's not a thing for me to do it's not a thing for me to do That was the wonderful Adam Robinson and Frozen Flower. Of course, I spoke to him a couple of weeks ago uh, about his band Saw. So that pretty much brings us to the end of this week's show. So that's the end of another live local and loud with me, Kevin Gorn. I hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget, if you want to see what gigs are going down in sunny Leicestershire, check out our very handy gig guide in www.musicinleicester.co.uk. And if you want to listen to previous live local and louds and the interviews therein, check out musicinleicester.co.uk and you'll see a handy playlist on the right-hand side. So do have a good week and I look forward to seeing you here, Hermitage FM, next Thursday at 5 o'clock.